The custom cry attack is back from the shop and we're gonna tell you all about it in this episode of the Gear Guide. So if you guys remember a while back, I did a build challenge with Airsoft Barracks and admittedly, I've been sitting on this one for a while because man, it is just too nice and I didn't have the heart to even go out and play with it yet because it looks so good. But now that I've had a chance, I wanna show you guys the return of the Crytac CRB that Airsoft Barracks totally tricked out. So what they've done is, well, this obviously doesn't look like any Crytac you see in the market. They have gone above and beyond on this build. I gave it to them, kind of gave a rough budget and said, go for it. And man, I can't tell you how amazing this is. Well, actually I can, because you're looking at it right here. So with so much going on, we're gonna start with the front and work ourselves back. Then we'll talk about what happened under the hood. So first, we're gonna be here at the end and this muzzle brake, I love. It's so neat, so cool, and it really accentuates the fact that the barrel threading is actually almost slightly recessed underneath the rail. So having this real beefy, short, stubby, flash suppressor here on the end really adds a cool aggressive look. And I don't know if you guys can see it there on the camera, the little, uh, the pattern on it. I mean, just all those little details. Then of course, obviously this MX3 flashlight, this is gonna be your primary light. And you guys are gonna go, well, Jonathan, there's a couple lights on here. There's a good reason for that as well. But this MX3 is bright, super bright. And they added the pressure pad here on top for it. So it works in momentary mode, or you can flip the switch here on the back and move it to full on all the time. Now also here, the other pressure pad actuates the d bow Now this is the Element version two d bow It's like the newest one. It also mimics the new version of the actual civilian and I think uh, military version of the d bow as well. If you guys don't know what a d bow is, basically it's a visible and infrared aiming laser, which also includes a flashlight. So we have two lights on here and you're going, well, that's really redundant. Actually, it's not. If you guys play a lot of night games or milsim, having two separate flashlights is critical. You never know when the batteries are gonna die. You never know when one's gonna take a really hard hit and go down. It's happened to me and then it leaves you in the dark, literally and figuratively. So with the D-Bow, you get that second flashlight. Both of these are really bright. The Mix 3 definitely takes the cake with brightness, but this one is a really close second for a good backup. Also on the other side, we have the visible and the infrared aiming laser. And of course, I have night vision, play a lot of night games at Milsim Ops, so having that IR laser is so cool. But when you're at the daytime, it does have a pretty darn good red visible pointing laser. Now, of course, moving on down the sides, they added these little rail panels. Now, these are designed for key mod rails, which of course the CryTac comes with. And it's just a great little touch to contrast the coloring of the gun. And then on the bottom, they added these XT panels, these Magpul style XT panels, as well as a longer lower rail that locks in the key mod. So if you guys aren't a big fan of this, it's no big deal. You can take this off and there's a rail up underneath and you can actually add like a foregrip, an angled foregrip or anything, or just take it all off and let it run clean. Now I did like what they did. I, I know when I first posted photos of this, people were asking, well, why do they add the rail and then all this? And I was like, it's kind of interesting. I like the beefiness of this. It fits in the hand really well. And I'm not a huge thumb over bore guy, but actually using a grip, if you guys can kind of see there on camera, it's comfortable to hold. It's easy to get to the pressure pads, especially if you want to use that aiming laser pad here on the left. All right, moving on back, of course, it's the optic time, and this is the perfect red dot. Most of the red dots in this style have a really big dot. So when you turn it on, it's just boom, it's in the way, it gets kind of like mucky when it gets up to the brighter settings. This one actually is really sharp and clean, a little smaller than the rest, and it, I found it was really easy to aim with, actually more so than the other ones I have. I actually have a couple of this style optic, and I found that this one is really good. I was really impressed with it. Of course, flip up caps, and it does come in the tan to add for that contrast color. And and then with the M68 style mount, so it kind of gets it up and above. And of course for iron sights, I did skip down on the front. They left the iron sight here in the front as well as the back, again, to keep that classic Crytac CRB styling. So you still have like the, the essence of the gun, but they moved the front sight back just a hair to make room for the pressure pads. And of course they left the back one right where it starts. Now, of course, moving on to the very end is the stock. They've left it pretty much, well, stock, except for the coloring. And that's where we're gonna get into what they did here externally. They have access to a top tier Cerakoting facility. We're not talking about they're going in their back room and they're just Cerakoting this thing up themselves and throwing it in an oven and baking it on. This is a company that does massive contracts for some huge names in the firearm industry. So the finish on this 
was mind blowing. I mean, I love a painted gun, don't get me wrong, but the Cerakote on this is really top notch. It is every bit as good as any real steel firearm I've seen. I'm like at a loss for words of how nice it turned out. The tan just sets this thing off. So rounding at the outside, you're gonna go, okay, Jonathan, it's time for the shopping list of what's under the hood. Well, this is a Crytac. And if you guys have seen my review of this gun before it got totally tricked out, you guys will know that the Crytac internals are like really the best on the market when you're looking at a gun that's north of $300 stock. And they really didn't have to do too much to it. They did go and do some fine tunings to the internals. So reshimming some gears, like fine tuning. I mean, just adding that last little bit of perfection, um, fine tuning that angle of engagement on the piston, just getting it just right. And just a few little special things that the Airsoft Barracks guys do. I tell you what, when I picked this thing up and I started shooting it, I was kind of dry firing it at first before I actually loaded it with BBs and took it out, it sounded like it was still shooting really soft, like with stock, you know, like 330 feet per second. But when I put it on the chrono, it was 400 feet per second. It is effortless. I'm gonna tell you, they've done like this last little bit and they've taken a great gun and made it darn near perfect. I was super surprised at how smooth and crisp this thing shot. And again, using bone stock parts. The only thing they changed under the hood physically was the spring. So guys, if you want to have your gun tricked out to the nines, and again, this is the showpiece. I mean, honestly, this is gonna be on the higher end because they've done it all, especially the Cerakoting. That really raises that price up, but not too terribly. It doesn't get it out of range because I shipped them my gun. We're looking at about 600 and some change of upgrades all in. That's internal labor work. That's actually the externals, the paint, and all these accessories added to it. So if you guys are looking for an incredible custom gun, for a Crytac, for a VFC, or for anything, give a look at Airsoft Barracks Custom Shop. Give them a call, reach out to them, pop them an email, hit them up on Facebook. So if you're interested in really tricking out a gun, whether it's externally like this one, internally, or something in between, Airsoft Barracks is definitely the shot. And I'm gonna tell you what, this is definitely my go-to gun for 2015 for all of the Milsim Ops. But what would you do on this gun? What would you change on this gun? What would you make different? Or what would you just say, hey, Jonathan, we're gonna leave this whole thing alone? Let me know down in the comment section below. Well, guys, that's it for this episode of the Gear Guide. I'll be back in the next one where I take a totally upgraded gun and take it back to bone stock in a reverse upgrade.